kufika kesi kule ICC na ametuma pole zake na tumuombe karibu kwa kile katwa kutoma testa kutoka tukulingana na tabcheso ali jamge good afternoon eh kwa family capsam into it uh, kibors family pole ni sana najua nimekutana na mainly the wives and the sons probably the grandsons wajaje nimekutana nao na najua pia tumekutana in various uh, fashion sa singine kwa namna ya urafiki na sa singine kwa namna ya friction kidogo lakini all said and done um kibor was somebody i really respected uh not only was he a client lakini alikuwa he became a friend na um, kwa heshima yake najua kuna maneno fulani fulani alinieleza na uh fulani alikuwa nimeeleza Philip Unita na hao wengine I will be there for you as a family and um, I know a few people have made comments here and there I will make sure that uh, Kibor's name is respected um na pengine niseme pia ya kwamba my interactions with Philip Unita na hao wengine uh, is such that I should say Philip thank you very much for the way you have handled these issues this far and we really wish you well as you manage this uh, situation uh, ningependa pia kusema kwamba nimeambiwa niseme uh, pole sana kwa ni hapa ya mawakili na jua politi- uh, uh, bishop wakati alikuwa akiongea alisimamisha ma bishops politicians wakajisimamisha ningaomba wakili pia wasimame and uh, that includes even Cholet. There are some people who probably wouldn't have had authority if it weren't for that opportunity. So for on behalf of these lawyers and the others who are not here, I can see my friend behind there. Uh, and to Nasema Pole Sana. Gisher also called me from Netherlands. Akasema Pole Sana. We did uh, some cases for Muse with Gisher, including the one for um, Mafutafa. Na kwa hivyo wanasema Pole Sana. May I say lastly about Kebor probably three things one is that it is true he was barely literate but when the phrase in english was conceptualized yakusema being streetwise i think they practically had Kebor in mind because he was practically streetwise mm-hmm. i remember he was explaining to me that his kapla sijakuwa wakili he was explaining to me the type of uh, relationship he had with Moy and he was explaining to me when that when Moy made his life very difficult he consulted and incorporated companies and he put his wives and his children including Philip and he was able to go on with business and uh, you can remember those days of Moy if you were in his bad books the possibility would be that your life would be very miserable but somehow kibor was able to get around that with that kind of innovation and for that reason i would say he was extremely streetwise um there's an advocate in nairobi called kibunja kibunja had a claim against kibor of about 36 million and by the time we were finishing it was about 70 million and uh, it was a very difficult case we were practically going to lose because he had signed all sorts of things but as we were getting nearer the point at which judgment would be entered, which was going to be adverse to us, Kibor said we need, he said he, he transferred most of his things. And then we had him employed by Philip, I think, and Naomi in a company that Philip and Naomi and so on. So he was earning a salary of 15,000. And so when the judgment, when the judgment for 70 million was entered, we said, here is what our income is. It is 15,000. If you want to deduct it, you can collect as much as you want until you get to the... And um, <laughs> the, the thing that uh, every time I would meet Kibunja, even if I meet him now, he would tell me is he can't believe what we took him through. Because Kibor would drive a Fiex Fieko to either DDW or CMC for service it's a new vehicle the next day you'd come with a land cruiser he practically was affluent in every sense but you could not pick anything from him and and he kept saying that uh, um, 
we, we are very innovatively beaten him. And, and I, I just want to say that to show just how innovative and imaginative Kibor was, notwithstanding that he was um, barely literate. And um, having met most of the family members, uh, I can confirm Aleman Guyaga Moe Philip, they, they are tough people, both the men and the ladies. And um, probably the same way you're asking for a street to be named after you, uh, Kibor, I think almost all lawyers in Eldoret have had to deal with Kibor. Mara, <laughs> in a friendly way, Mara adversely, because like me now, I have a couple of bills with him in court. He would come, we negotiate, we agree, he re-engages me, disengages me. And uh, <laughs> even as I was sitting somewhere there, my, my friend Moshimi Wakili was reminding me of an incident where Kibor was insisting that I must say something. But I couldn't say it because it was scandalous and I couldn't say it. So I kept telling him, it can't come from my mouth. It cannot be me saying that. He kept saying, if I have engaged you, actually he asked me, how much more fees do you want me to pay you for specifically saying that thing? I told him, I just can't. <laughs> and uh, eventually he told me, okay, tell me how what I want to say can be said. So I told him, the only way we can do that then because I suspect no other lawyer would agree to do what you want to do, to say what you want to say. The only way we can do that is for you yourself to say it. So he asked me, how can we do it? So he told, I told him, what we can do is we walk into court, we, I prepare for you a notice to act in person, you go file it in your reg the registry yourself because I can't file it. You act for yourself, you say what you want to say, and then we file a notice to re-engage me, but you'll have had, you'd have fended your spleen. And I didn't believe he would do it. But actually, a few minutes after the court session had started, I'm on my feet talking. He walks in with a notice and he gives me. The effect of that notice is practically to suck me when I'm on my feet <laughs> defending him. <laughs> and then he said what he had to say. And then shortly thereafter, he asked me to continue. But it, it just reflects just how imaginative he was. And so, in closing, may I say that it was such a privilege to have uh, served with him. And uh, um, let's say, even as we mourn uh, his death, may we say that we also thank God for the years he gave us with him, the type of a person he was, the type of example. We thank God for the years he gave him. He was clearly a very able fellow. He was, I mean, he was very athletic. I have uh, seen in the obituary uh, a certain verse in the Bible that he said to have been fa his favorite. But I recall a couple of times when I would meet him and I would, we would occasionally go out to say we have a cup of tea. I am a son of a pastor. And uh, I would tell him, let's pray before we take a cup of tea or, or uh, we take a meal. And he would say, uh, okay, you would find it very perplexing that somebody can have that consistency. I mean, okay, over time, that consistency probably has started uh, ebbing away, but it, it used to be there. And he used to say that you would like to know the name of somebody in the Bible. And that person, I can see Caleb wants to harass me. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible, I think it is John 9:25, where somebody, Jesus heals somebody who was blind. And... Uh, and the Pharisees and the scribes and the church leaders came and asked him, are you sure that is the past, that is the son of God? And he said, I don't know. He went away. He was called the second time. He was asked, are you sure? And he said, let me, and they told him, the, the person was healed, you know you could only have been born blind because your parents were sinners and probably you yourself are a sinner. And he said, my position is this, I do not know who son is, but what I know he has, is that he has healed me and I will follow him. So for him, he used to say, people accuse me of so many things, but what I know is that I'm alive through the grace of God and that God must be acknowledging me. He must be knowing me in my identity, in my character, and must be still um, be, be happy to deal with me. 
and, and used to say that that is a very his favorite fast. And so he used to ask me to say, please try to get the name of that person because I want to see if I can adopt his name uh, if eventually I get to be, to be baptized. Lastly, he asked me if I could write to the Pope. According to him, the Ten Commandments were written by the Pope. He said, if I could write to the Pope a petition to make poverty the 11th commandment. He used to say, <laughs> if, go, if you have been born able, you are not disabled, you have no challenges, but you still end up in your life being poor, then God should not admit you to heaven. And so he said he wanted the, the, the idea of being eventually, eventually old and tired, poor, to be made an 11th commandment so that it is a, it is a sin to be, to, be, to be poor at the end of your life. Uh, people, you can see what Caleb is doing to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for tolerating me uh, and the family Poleni. I am with you. If there's any value I can add to this process and the way forward, I am happy to.